I'm Katie Farner, Superstar Director for the Sunshine State Superstars. I wanted to talk to you today about doing events with little to no stock. This is something that I've been getting a lot of questions about. A lot of our newer team members are finding vendor events this fall and they're wanting to participate, but they're a little hesitant and fearful because they don't have inventory on hand. And so I want to tell you my best tips to working vendor events with little to no stock. Okay, so first things first, weighing out your cost to determine if it's worth doing the event. Now, if you have little to no stock, I wouldn't encourage you to invest $200 or $300 or more to do a vendor event because it might be challenging to recoup your cost. So that's something to think about. You know, I don't want to advise you one way or the other, but I would say just be really cautious and thoughtful about what cost you're putting in to do a vendor event if you don't have the stock. What I would encourage you to do is try to find events that are $100 and under. Those are the kind of events where you can focus on leads and trying to take orders and things like that to help you recoup your cost for being there and really make it worth your while. So that's just my advice on the whole cost scenario. So let's talk about the look of your table. So what's so important is that your table is very clean, neat, and simple and people are encouraged to come and want to shop. They're drawn to your table. If your table is messy and sloppy and disorganized, they won't be drawn to come and shop. So it's actually really beneficial that you have little to no stock because it'll be easier for you to keep it nice and organized and neat. So thumbs up for that one. So make sure that your display is simple and clean. Make sure that you group anything that you have so it's convenient. For example, warmers over here, diffusers over here, bars over here. Group things together so it's not just a cluster and you've got diffusers over here and oils over here and wax over here and warmers. You want to keep it easy to shop, easy to browse. Okay, so maybe you have only what came in your starter kit. That's great. Just use what came in your starter kit. Have your warmer, have your bar there and bring all of your testers. You have an opportunity to have people smell every single fragrance. You know, when I do a vendor event and I'm bringing inventory, it's very, I don't really do a lot of inventory. I have a little bit of inventory. So I don't have every single scent, but with you having your starter kit there and bringing your testers, you will have every single scent. So if something, if there's something that someone wants, you can easily, easily show that to them and also take an order for them. So that works out perfectly. So get your testers categorized, just like they come in your uh, catalog. You'll see, you know, corner cafe, fall and winter, holiday. So group your testers into categories and have little baskets for each category. And a word of advice, especially if you got our full size party testers in your kit, the wider the basket, the better, because if the basket's really skinny and really deep, then people will just be digging and it's kind of awkward. So wide baskets or even cute little wide like platters work well to display your testers, especially if they're full size party testers. So have one basket or one platter for each category and that'll fill up some table space nicely as well. When you are doing a seasonal event, like it's fall right now, um, you've got winter, you've got Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, Easter, you know, there's so many holidays throughout the year, occasions throughout the year, where you can have cute, inexpensive seasonal decor as part of your table. That really helps to make your table look more appealing and inviting as well. So right now, one of my favorite things to do is get little small hail, um, bales of hay, like from Michael's or Hobby Lobby, any crafting store. I love to get little bales of hay and stack them up and display warmers and things on top of them. So bring Try to incorporate those things any way you can. Um, maybe some little Halloween decor or fall decor. And then as we move into Christmas, doing some Christmas decor. Little touches like that will also make your table look more inviting. Funny side note, I've actually had multiple times at events, people try to buy my fall or Christmas decor that I have on my table. <laughs> like, that's not what I'm selling today, but thanks, I'm glad you like it. <laughs> so it really does help to draw people over. Uh, so let's talk about signage. When it comes to your event, since you have smaller amount of inventory or no inventory, signage is important. 
Make sure that you have signage about hosting parties, signage about joining. Maybe you're having a hard time finding some signage. Go onto Facebook. Some of my favorite groups are, um, I, I love Flyers by Shauna. That's one of my favorite pages to get flyers. Or you can even make your own using an app like Word Swag or Rana Designs. That's a way you can make your own flyers. So have some kind of signage for bookings and for the business opportunity. Another thing that can help fill your table space and also make your table appealing is a sample bar. A sample bar, I have a separate video on that that you could watch if you want more details, but a sample bar is really just that. In advance, you make some samples. Maybe you've been buying Scentsy for a while, so you've got a few bars laying around. Melt them down and make some samples and have you know two, three, four little baskets with samples inside of it, just loosely, and then some little baggies for them to put your business card and whatever two samples they've decided to take in the little baggie. But spreading that out and having that there really looks appealing because people like to be able to pick their own scents and it just really draws people in. You want to use your opportunity to book parties and to share the business opportunity. So make sure that you have drawing slips. You can have some kind of a drawing or a raffle going on at your table. You just can't have signage that you are. Like for example, you can have a sign that says, enter my drawing to win a free nightlight. You actually can't have that signage that is considered out of compliance, but you can verbally tell people. So you could have some little basket there that you want to give away, um, and then you could tell people verbally, hey, I'm doing a drawing today to give away a free nightlight of your choice. You know, I'd love to enter you into the drawing or whatever. And so have your drawing slips there and be ready to take down their information and, and enter them into the drawing. When people come to your table and they show interest, they show interest in the drawing, they show interest in the sample bar, they show interest in a warmer that you have, use that opportunity to try to turn that into a booking. It's always better to forego a sale and get a booking in its place. So for example, let's say somebody came up and they're going through the sample bar and they're like, ooh, ah. I'd walk up to them and say, hey, how are you doing today? They'd say whatever they'd say, and i say, oh, good. So have you used Scentsy before? You seem familiar with it. Because if they're just picking out samples and they're not asking me any questions, to me, that's a flag, a sign that they're already familiar with Scentsy. So I'll say, oh, do you already have a Scentsy warmer, or are you already familiar with us? And if they tell me, yeah, yeah, I have Scentsy, I love it, my first question would be, do you have a consultant? Because we never want to steal a, consult a customer from someone. Um, so if they tell me no, of course, then I would proceed and say, oh, well, I'd love to be your Scentsy consultant. You know, have you, have you ever done a party so you don't have to buy your Scentsy retail? I'd love to help you do that. That's an easy segue. Now, let's say that you're talking to this person and she doesn't know what Scentsy is. She just thinks she's picking up candy or something. Um, you would ask her, oh, are you familiar with Scentsy? You seem like you're maybe familiar with it. And then this, she says, no, what's Scentsy? Explain it. Say, oh my gosh, I'm so excited I get to be the one to introduce you. You're going to love it. So we have warmers that use a light bulb to safely add fragrance to your home. And they're beautiful. See, I have one over here on display. And we have over 100 different fragrances for you to choose from. As you can see, I've got them all here. I'd love to show you some. You know, what, what kind of fragrances normally speak to you? That is one of my favorite ways to get them attracted to Scentsy is by telling them what it is in a simple, clear way, avoiding the word burning, avoiding the word burners, avoiding the word candle, and showing them the fragrances. Because if we get them emotionally connected to the product, they aren't gonna wanna walk away without it. And how are we gonna get them emotionally connected? Through sniffing it. So that's why you want your testers there. So get them smelling the products. And if they're like, oh yeah, this is nice, or that's nice, or whatever, I would say, well, why don't we do a party and, and get it for you? Because we have to, we're, we're gonna order whatever you want today anyway, so why don't we just put this order towards a party? And you can get free product and half price items, and we can do whatever kind of party style you want. There's all different ways to party. This is how you do it. And I will tell you right now that you have to be confident in sharing bookings. You can't come at it in an uncomfortable way. 
So do whatever you must do to fill yourself with confidence before going to this event. And you go there knowing everybody wants what I have. Everybody wants what I have for free. Nobody wants to pay retail for this. I'm going to show them a way that they can do that. I'm their hero. I'm their Scentsy hero. I'm going to help them get Scentsy for free. They're going to love me. That's your mental attitude that you need to have. Don't go into it thinking, nobody wants to do parties. Mm. That's not going to help you book parties. I'm telling you right now. Your attitude determines your altitude. So make your attitude high. Know that people want what you have and you're going to show them how to get it. So maybe you're talking to somebody and they mention the business opportunity. Great. Have a join brochure that came in your starter kit. Have one of those ready to give to them. Talk to them about it. Answer their questions. Say, hey, let's meet for coffee. I'd love to talk to you more about this in a more personal, intimate setting. Be ready. Be prepared for anything. Be ready with your um, join brochures. Be ready with your host brochures. Have catalogs there for people that want to book parties or are really serious about the product. Have your showcase brochures for people who uh, that came in your starter kit for people who are maybe a little more interested and have your product sheets for just any old person who comes by because those product sheets are so inexpensive and what's great is your your starter kit comes with those three price points of materials if you got our $99 kit so you have different purposes for each of those product catalogs because of their different price points so the product sheets are amazing to use for events so make sure you have those ready to hand out your materials looking professional, having your labels on them and ready to rock and roll. So doing vendor events with little to no stock is not a problem at all. Find inexpensive events in your community and rock them out. Maybe you're sitting here wondering, oh, how do I even find events? Where do I even begin? The two of my best tips are utilizing the people that you already know. Utilize your friends and family, the people on your list of 100 other people in direct sales. You should have one person from every direct sales company that is your go-to gal. Not because you go to her to buy Pampered Chef, but because she's the Pampered Chef consultant that you work with. You tell her a bit about events that you find, she find, tells you about events that she finds, and that way you guys can work together. One person from every direct sales company kind of in your back, back pocket as your buddy, your referral buddy. You want one with every single direct sales company. Not because you're trying to recruit them, not because you're trying to do, get them to do parties, but because they, they and you, you have a referral program with each other. And then people on your list of 100, send out an email to every single person on your list of 100 and tell them, hey, is your church, is your community, is your children's school looking for any of these things? Ask about fundraisers, ask about vendor events because referrals work. They're the strongest way to grow your business as you're getting started because you have to ask for those referrals and these are people who know, like, and trust you and when you come to them and ask them, they want to help you out. So don't forget to ask about events, ask about fundraisers on a side note there. And I know that you can have some great events this fall even if you have little to no stock. I know you can make it a success, take orders, book parties, find team members. So pursue those events, invest what you can and what you feel comfortable in financially to be there and follow these steps to make it a success. Thanks for watching my video and make sure that you subscribe so you get updates every time I make a video. And these videos are designed to help you grow and make a successful business for yourself. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.